If you clicked on this video, you probably have an interest in ancient history like human evolution, ancient structures, theories surrounding the ancient world, ancient inventions, maybe even ancient queens or new archaeological discoveries. And if that's the case, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel. You click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. And if you enjoy my work, then maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. The Homo genus started approximately 2.3 million years ago when a new species evolved. And this species was distinctly different from the earlier Australopithecines that used to roam the African continent. This is the start of the lineage that eventually led to all of us, Homo sapiens, you know, modern humans. But who was this species? What did they look like? What can we uncover about the way they lived? My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about Homo habilis, the very first species in the Homo genus, the origin of all of us. So first let's take a quick overview of the name of Homo habilis and what this means. Well, I mean 99% of the people watching this video will know that Homo is Latin for human, even though I still regularly get people very angry at me in my comments saying that I cannot use the word homo. These comments are such gems. I absolutely love them. They make me laugh so much. And if you're one of the people that left such a comment, then thank you for that chuckle that I had. But what most people don't know is that the translation of habilis is Latin for skillful or handy. So this species is very well known under the nickname of handyman. We all have a handyman, hopefully in our lives that, you know, the guy that fixes your boiler or places the laminate flooring or fixes your electricity or your plumbing. Handymans are great. But the name handyman comes from the fact that there were stone tools discovered near the fossilized remains. And this shows that Homo habilis had developed the skill to modify stone into tools. They may not have been the very first to do so, but we at least know that it all started around the same time as when they evolved. So now that we know what the name means, it's time that we look into the location of the discovered remains and the area in which Homo habilis lived. As I've mentioned a few times now, the area in which a species lived and the area in which the remains are found can hold some clues for us and the researchers that are needed to try and solve the puzzle that is the human evolutionary timeline. It's good to know where things came from and in which area they lived because, yeah, it gives us certain information that's needed. The remains of Homo habilis were discovered at the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania and this is one of the very most important paleoanthropological locations in the entire world. The gorge has played such a key significant role in our understanding of the early human evolution. 45 kilometers south of the gorge are the Latoli footprints located, which are amongst the oldest fossilized footprints ever discovered. Note that I did actually say amongst some of the oldest, as I personally am of the belief that the Trachylos footprints on the island of Crete in Greece are the actual oldest ever found of pre-humans or hominids, if you will. I had an interview with Professor Alberg from the Uppsala University in Sweden last October about the Trachylos footprints and again in December about the Latoli footprints where we discussed the Trachylos footprints again. So the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania is located in the east of Africa and this is where some of the very oldest fossils ever discovered have been found. Like for instance the Latoli canine belonging to Australopithecus afarensis dating to 3.5 million years ago. Australopithecus afarensis is the same species as the famous Lucy, which was recently covered in a video by Stefan Milo, which I will link in the description down below because it's a great watch. So now that we know where the remains were discovered, it's time to look into the discovery itself. In 1959, Hesselon Mukiri, the senior assistant of Louis and Mary Leakey, stumbled upon the very first remains, which was a molar belonging to Homo habilis. Although at the time, this wasn't realized that the molar belonged to an actual different species. About a year after this first discovery in 1960, Jonathan Leakey, 
Louis and Mary's son discovered the remains of a partial juvenile skull, a hand and some foot bones dating to approximately 1.75 million years ago. And these remains are named OH7. These were the first recognizable remains of a new species and it took the Leakey family approximately 29 years of excavating in the Olduvai Gorge to finally stumble upon the first early hominin remains. They had excavated many other remains in these years, mostly animal remains as well as the Olduvai stone tool industry, which belonged to either Paranthropus poisi or Homo habilis. Um, Paranthropus poisi is a species in the genus of the Australopithecines that lived between 2.5 and 1.15 million years ago. For a while it was believed that this new species belonged to the genus of the Australopithecines, but eventually in 1964, South African paleoanthropologist Philip V. Tobias and British primatologist John R. Napier officially assigned this new species in the Homo genus. And by the recommendation of Australian anthropologist Raymond Dart, they gave the species the name of Habilis, which, as I mentioned earlier, is Latin for handy or skillful. So after the announcement of Homo habilis, there was a lot of debate and the fact that this species was assigned into the Homo genus was not without controversy. This is mostly because at the time of the announcement, it was still believed that the Homo genus had evolved from Asia. And it was believed at the time that the Australopithecines had no living descendants and therefore no evolutionary species was believed to have existed in Africa after the Australopithecines disappeared. The fossilized remains of Homo habilis are discovered in quite a vast area spanning over the countries of Kenya and Tanzania. The most notable places where the remains have been found are the Kubi Fora near Lake Turkana in Kenya, near Lake Turkana itself, many locations, and at the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Homo habilis changed the entire perception when more and more fossilized remains kept being discovered, showing not only that they were indeed a new Homo species with Australopithecine characteristics, but it showed that the out of Africa theory actually was the real theory and it's not the out of Asia theory. In 1999, biological anthropologist Mark Collers suggested that habilis should be moved into the Australopithecus genus because when they analyzed the skull fragments of Homo habilis, it had much more Australopithecine features instead of the Homo features. But this eventually changed after the re-evaluation of OH62 and they discovered a more human-like physiology. It was shown that Homo habilis was the species in between the Australopithecus africanus and Homo erectus and the later Homo species, placing it in a sort of key position on our human evolutionary timeline. Some people believe that Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis are the same species and others believe them to be distinctly different species. That's not my thing to say. <laughs> Some scientists actually aren't too happy about naming fossil specimen. This has to do with the fact that names might be changed when a new discovery has been made that changes the interpretation of the discovered species. There are two specimen at the center of a massive debate about the assignment of Homo habilis and if it's indeed a Homo species or if it's and a different species. We have KNM-ER 1470 discovered in 1972 and this specimen dates to 1.7 million years ago. It has a large brain between 750 and 800 cubic centimeters and the teeth of this specimen are not preserved but the roots and the sockets suggest that they were quite large with larger molars than the other discovered Homo habilis fossils. The sockets and the roots suggest that they were more like the size of the Australopithecine teeth and molars. The upper jaw of this specimen is more square and the brow ridge is slightly developed with a large and flat and long face. So the second specimen is KNM-ER 1813 and this specimen was discovered in 1973 and it dates again 
from approximately 1.7 million years ago as well. So we're in the same time frame with both specimen. This second specimen had a small brain of about 500 cubic centimeters, a small rounded upper jaw with human-like teeth. A strong developed brow ridge and a small face that wasn't flat. So just from these two descriptions, it sounds indeed like they are completely different, which isn't strange. So it suggested that the bigger specimen was a male and the smaller specimen was a female. Although <laughs> we do not really see the same sort of differences in males and females in modern humans or in the apes. So that's a weird suggestion. And the other suggestion is that these two specimens are from two different species. A discovery in 1999 might eventually change the classification of the larger specimen, the KNM-ER 1470. The discovery in 1999 was a skull that belongs to the species of Kenyanthropus platyops. And this skull is eerily similar to that of the larger specimen, KNM-ER 1470. And this has led some scientists to consider reclassification the larger specimen into the Kenyanthropus genus. And there is more debate about this, and I will eventually create an entire video surrounding all the controversial specimen of Homo habilis. Because if you have seen one of my previous videos, you know that I'm not the one to make conclusions about things like this. I simply mention it and let it up to you to decide what you believe. I'm not a scholar and I have no credentials in this field. I am merely researching and reporting about these species as I am beyond fascinated to learn more about the human evolutionary timeline. And I like to share that with all of you. So back to the subject, back to the species. The oldest discovered fossil of Homo habilis was dated to 2.3 million years ago, and it has less ancestral traits than the younger specimen of OH7. And this suggests that Homo habilis evolved earlier, and not every Homo habilis individual evolved in the same manner. The younger OH7 individual showed much more ancestral traits, suggesting that habilis individuals with an evolved morphology lived alongside habilis individuals with an ancestral morphology. The youngest Homo habilis specimen that we have found up until now dates to approximately 1.65 million years ago. For a species that lived for nearly a million years, maybe even longer, we cannot assume that they didn't evolve over time. They changed and developed as time went on. And we can see those changes in the specimen that were uncovered. Maybe there was hybridization occurring that we don't know about. Anything is possible. We see the same thing happen to us Homo sapiens over the past 300,000 years. And of course, in the animal kingdom, we see species that keep evolving as well. But back to Homo habilis, because we need to stay on subject and we really don't need to me to go off of a tangent of any kind because I can do that I can just keep talking for another hour it's not good for anyone so now that we know where the remains have been found and the controversy surrounding the naming of the species and its placement in the homo genus it's time to look into the morphology and the key features homo habilis has some features reminiscent of the australopithecines but other features are more similar to other early Homo species. Homo habilis was in general quite small, similar to the sizes of the Australopithecines, and the females reached an approximate height of 110 centimeters, and the males reached an approximate height of 130 centimeters. The average brain size of Homo habilis averaged around 610 cubic centimeters, which was approximately 1.7% of their body weight, which is quite the increase when compared to the brains of the Australopithecines. The skull shape was already evolved in a different manner than the early Australopithecines, and the brain case became more rounded due to the larger brain size. The onset of a slight forehead was appearing as well. I mean, I have a five head, but ah, everyone has their own thing. The face was smaller and shorter than the earlier ancestors, and a small arched brow ridge was forming. 
At the base of the skull was a hole for the spinal cord, which indicates that Homo habilis walked upright on two legs, at least for short periods of time. The jaw of Homo habilis on average was smaller than the jaws of the Australopithecines, and the teeth were more like those of us modern humans, arranged in a more rounded arc, and the teeth were smaller and more human-like. But the incisors remained quite large in relative size to the other teeth. The limbs of Homo habilis were in proportion still very ape-like actually, similar to those of the Australopithecines with relative short legs, but features of the leg and foot bones indicate that Homo habilis indeed walked upright on two legs, again at least for short periods of time. The finger bones were slightly curved, a bit in the middle of the shapes of modern humans and quadrupedal apes, although the finger bone proportions suggest the human-like ability to hold and use tools with a precision grip. So as you can imagine from a species that lived this long ago and was at the origins of our human evolutionary timeline, there isn't much known about their culture and how they lived and survived as a species. It's not that strange. But thankfully, during the excavations, there have been a few discoveries that hold some clues, like for instance, the possibility that Homo habilis might be the first of our ancestors to create stone tools. This seems to signify a key change in the mental capabilities of them as a species and helped create a shift towards new survival strategies that later on developed and evolved and led to us modern humans and the way we live and survive in this world. The stone tools that they created were simple and crude, like for instance scrapers, core tools and simple choppers, and they started making them as early as 2.6 million years ago. Note that this is about 2.6 million years ago. Again, the fossils that we found are only showing the timeline of the discovered fossils. A species could have lived much earlier until much later. So these tools are classified as mode one technology, but it's not clear if Homo habilis were the creators of these tools, or if this was done by an earlier species. These mode one technology tools are often referred to as older one stone tools, the same that I mentioned earlier in the video that were discovered by Louis and Mary Leakey. These stone tools were first discovered in the Olduvai or Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Depends on who you ask how to pronounce and write it. They were a clear progression of the natural unmodified stones and sticks that the Australopithecines most likely used. The older one stone tools were created by using a hammer stone to strike another stone, which is the core stone. And this is done to remove one or more flakes. This is how cores and scrapers are created. The environment in which Homo habilis mostly lived was grassland. A chemical analysis suggested that they predominantly ate a vegetarian diet, but they did include small portions of meat into that diet, probably from scavenging, not necessarily from hunting. It is thought that because the climate cooled down, they needed to invent new feeding strategies, and this was needed to survive in that time. And this might actually be the reason for them creating these earlier mentioned tools. Homo habilis was one of the first species in the Homo genus, although it seems that rather than Homo erectus evolving from Homo habilis, it is much more likely that the two species lived side by side for approximately half a million years. It's not necessarily that Homo erectus evolved from habilis. Um, there might be a hybridization species in between, or they evolved around the same time, but separately. About half a century ago, Homo habilis was first discovered and they shifted the search for the first humans away from Asia and into Africa, which changed the entire world of paleoanthropology. And of course, this wasn't without controversy. And unfortunately, unfortunately, this still remains up until this day. Even after all the discovered fossils, different species and tools, and all the evidence for the out of Africa theory, there are still people who don't believe that we all originated from the African continent. But we all need to remember that until more discoveries are made and more pieces of the puzzle of the human evolutionary timeline are uncovered, we know equally as much as we don't know. 
but we shouldn't speak about what we don't know as if we do know. This is the biggest puzzle that exists ever. <laughs> and the chances of it ever being solved are slim to none, but thankfully we have these amazing people in the field of paleoanthropology, paleontology and archaeology and anthropology that will keep working hard in hopes of uncovering a new piece to fit inside this massive puzzle. And if you have seen a few of my videos in the Hominid series, then you know I will be covering the new discoveries and will tell you everything that I could find out about it. That is a promise that I can make to you. Because, you know, I'm fascinated by it myself as well. We might never truly know the origins of the first species that is our oldest ancestor, but we do know that Homo habilis existed at the very base of the Homo genus, and they could possibly have been one of our first ancestral species. It's unclear if hybridization occurred between Homo erectus and Homo habilis, Homo habilis and the Australopithecines, or Homo erectus and the Australopithecines which created Homo habilis, we don't know. But if this is the case, then they may very well be one of our first ancestral species. Like I said earlier, I will create a video about all the controversial specimen and their classification and how they may not be from the Homo habilis lineage. But if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload, because I do that out of the blue. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner and otherwise I'm just gonna cry. You can also click a link in the description down below or click a video in the end card. Feel free to do any of that. If you enjoy my work, then maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. And I would like to thank all the existing patrons and channel members because your support is just unwavering and I'm eternally grateful. So thank you so much. And this was Homo habilis. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next one, I think. I should probably see you in the next video that I will make very soon. <laughs>